Our next speaker will be Mr. K. S. Vishwanathan, Vice President, Industry Initiatives, NASCOM. He has been at the forefront of NASCOM's efforts towards building a strong coalition among members to help India retain its pole position in the IT sector. He oversees the startup initiatives and his key focus has been on building centers of excellence. He is responsible for implementing the National Skills Registration Registry Initiative to make India a secure destination for IT outsourcing activities. In his career spanning 36 years, he has held leadership positions at Wipro Infotech, Dell and Azim Premji Foundation. Vishwanathan is a graduate from Birla Institute of Technology and Science and holds an MBA from Madras University. Please welcome him on stage. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It was an excellent presentation, sir. What I intend to take you through, the next slides, around software, how it is determining, and what are the changes, what we are seeing. Raman, I need to walk, because I already put the color mic on me. <laughs> right? Uh, what we intend to share is, how does the digital world looks like in 2025, right? Uh, to take an extension of the previous speaker, we expect bulk of it to be benefiting the customers a big way. The customers will have the complete free right, complete benefit of having to access resources when they want. It is also going to throw up a lot of societal challenges, especially in a people-rich country like India. Let's look at what is happening in the digital world from an Indian context. This slide talks about what's happening in a typical minute in India, a typical minute in the world. Typical minute in the world, so many text messages, close about 3.37 million Google mail, Google searches happens, close about 30 mails get exchanged every day, so many WhatsApp messages getting done, this is a new digital world which is completely happening today, right? Uh, this is real now and happening in real time basis completely. And what you also find, what is empaneling this, enabling the digital transformation of the industry, there are close to about 7.5 billion people use a mobile phone, close to about 3 billion, 3 billion people at any point of time are online, and over 2 billion people are using social media. The reason I am saying this is, in several surveys that NASCOM conducted with all its members, including engineering, design, manufacturing, they are leveraging the social media as a powerful device to connect their enterprises and to the customer base simultaneously put together. The, the previous speaker again alluded the factors which is leading to adoption of digital completely are the following factors. Realizing the maximum value of a potential supply chain. The entire organizational chain, right from supply to end customer, the points are there where the value exists. Organization in the past have leveraged only few other points. The key driver is how do we leverage these supply chain points, is supply chain point, the value points across the chain. And the previously in computers, we used to have something called MTTR, mean time to respond, right? Now an additional three letter word, CCD has been added, mean time to respond to changing customer demand. Whichever organization is responding, reducing the total mean time to changing customer demand are actually going to survive for a longer period of time. You know the examples of uh, the companies who transform the digital watches, digital cameras, etc., 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 they're completely driver. So driver, getting the customer insights, driver is to take the value out of the entire logistics chain, supply chain, people chain, etc., is what we believe is going to drive digitization adoption in the industry. This is a busy slide for the people who don't see the behind. When the commercialization of internet took place in early 90s, early 2000, the industry which got impacted the most was the retail and the financial services. Retail and the financial services. And uh, that is because the uh, it was touching the customer directly. People are taking advantage of the customer interfaces. BFSI, the banking financial services industry, is adopting the digitization furthermore globally. Approximately about 15% of total digitization revenue globally is coming from BFSI side. About 12% is coming from retail side. The two segments we talked about have been completely impacted. Our own estimate globally from a Forrester's report, he says 
eight percent of manufacturing is currently utilizing, utilizing digitization because the commercial internet is now getting real-time internet in manufacturing world just beginning of 2012-2013. The last three to four years, internet is being utilized by manufacturing segment, not necessarily for connecting your uh, customers to your supply chain, is also connecting your equipments to talk to another, one another, getting a real-time information of what is taking place. Again, from a context of where the digitization is getting deployed, our estimate is the back office operations are the people where people have attempted to digitize because A, safe, low cost of failure, high cost of I, I, the higher level of innovation. Front office, people are still scared. Yes, people are still scared to utilize digitization as a tool. We don't know how the customer will respond. But the jury is, if we don't utilize digital in the front offices, the complete thing could collapse. What are they again, the five different ways on which the digital is getting used? A, it could be, in, this is an interesting slide, so build up to what you said, a really powerful slide indeed. Uh, some of the technologies which is impacting the digital, whether it is 3D printing, whether it is IoT, whether it is a big data analytics. But the problem is, globally, there currently today, the shortage of skills in this technology by close about 80 million people. 80 million people, short on skilled people, expected to go to about 800 million by 2025. That is a problem we are currently dealing with. Digitization is good. You may like to have more people coming on IoT. You may like to have more people trained and skilled available people for analytics or AR, VR, or say blockchain, etc., etc. The fact is that a skill is a problem. Secondly, the biggest impact what we're saying digitization is a concept called case. The concept called case, it is essentially featured around connectivity, the sims are getting more autonomous, shared mobility, and also for electrification. Electrification is not necessarily from an energy perspective, electrification also from an automobile perspective. So the connected vehicles, connectivity, 5G, IoT, is when technology is driving digitization completely differently. More importantly, systems are getting more autonomous. When I say systems getting autonomous, systems getting intelligent. For example, the current buzzword in the automobile industry, what was earlier an automobile industry for a real mechanical functionality is an iPad with four wheels, right? Everything's there inside. It tells you what to do, what not to do. As you said, the driver behavior is also captured. The Tesla is giving their feedback given to you, etc. is now happening all real time. So that's the way the autonomous system is getting built. Shared mobility example would be an example of the, in India, of course, the, Daim, the Mahindra and Mahindra. Internationally, is Mercedes Benz. Mercedes Benz and Daimler, they used to manufacture car for a premium segment. They realized the impact of Uber. The people are now not driving their car as much as possibly taking shared services. They said, how do we work with Uber? How do we work with equivalent of Ola? How do we work equivalent of shared services? Start offering car for that spaces. They are redesigning their entire application to put across there. Many people are utilizing the case as a technology. My request in adoption is, uh, whenever you use this terminology, connectivity, autonomous system, shared mobility, and electrification, please attend those seminars. Please attend those seminars. You can get much, much, much more. If it's just the tip of the iceberg, this is completely going to change. This is a factor on which uh, Ganapati, we're all working together in India also. What is required? How do we get the concept evangelized? How do we get concept utilized? How do we get people skilled on cases and architecture? And this is what India as a country, to you, sir, is building towards our capability for. We believe that if we build our capabilities in case, in five to 10 years time, engineering R&D industry from India will be competing in the global market just the way Detroit led the automobile world for 100 years back. That's what we believe. And I completely agree with you. The future is getting to software-defined manufacturing. And CASE is adopting that. We are building the complete focus on CASE. And CASE is driven by these technologies which I'm talking about. And this is, again, as I said, uh, drawing the curve from the, the, the value matrix, what you saw, the maturity versus the business side. We believe digital recruitment, digital procurement, digital business value, all of them, are, we believe, are going to make the complete impact. So what I thought is, at a conceptual level, digitization for us includes those seven technologies. 
Digitalization for us include adopting those technologies into four systems, case and system. Digitalization for us include these drivers of the business. So three dimensional metrics, fortunately or unfortunately, I didn't know how to draw that in a single slide. I explained the three different way. So if we can focus on three dimensions on business, technology and system, we find we can crack the digitization sooner or later. Uh, again, from a concept of Daimler-Benz, Daimler-Benz in the cars, what is getting designed for the globally from India, uh, what they are now debating is when you pay for a premium car, when you get inside, when you switch on the engine, how does an air conditioning system work? Is it generating blow on very quickly, cold, 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 coolness very quickly or what needs to be done? That design using digital technology is being done in the country. Or the Viper, previously the Viper, which was with that Mercedes-Benz, which is the what used to swing left and right on a trial and error basis. It was att attempted, prototype created, solved. Now they're putting as much as possible, everything into com computer digital simulation world in the Bangalore center, so then the product is simulated and working fine, only then it releases the marketplace. That is a kind of changes which is leading to efficiency and productivity that is taking place. At a very, very high level, I was just, I've got three examples, consumer durables, what is happening. There is an impact on supply, supply chain. There is an impact of product development, the supply, manufacturing, packaging, sales, marketing and distribution, consumer retailing. All of them are getting impacted by digital. This slide talks about the traditional ways of how people have done it and alternate ways people are attempting to do it. For example, in sales and marketing, if I take this as an example, in the past, it used to be a custom-built product, custom-built, uh, a generalized marketing taking place. If you were to visit, uh, anybody from Volkswagen here? If you were to visit any of the Volkswagen sh dealer showroom, all of us go, many of us go to look at what's going on in the car. They have an analytic software tool. When you walk in, you fill in your parameters and particulars. Within the seventh minute, they can predict are you a serious buyer to buy their car or generally walking through to find a price details or are you getting across? Depending on that analysis, what they walk in the showroom, including in India, they can tell you how much of time they're going to spend with you or not spend with you. Right? Those are the kind of changes people are now adopting completely in the country too. All these things are changing. The traditional way in consumer industry is evolving change. Give you another example. This is a case of, for example, IoT and GIS, how various companies have adopted. Example of Itachi, com, Ita, the company of Tata Steel. For example, Tata Steel, one of the problems what they had solved, they're trying to solve, is uh, uh, when they send people to the iron ore pits, right? And on experimental basis, they go deep and discover possibly the iron ore content was not as much they thought and potential risky to send in manned labor to go to the pit and discover that there are a lot of hurdles and challenges to overcome. Now they're devising an alternate devices of putting an IoT technology, which will go a manless, go find the data and give additional information what they need to do. Or for example, even uh, uh, BHP Pelion from Australia, so in some of their mining application, they're putting, uh, on all these developments I'm giving, the design work, development work is actually happening from India. The good news is the Indian large manufacturers, the Indian enterprises, both the captives and the service providers are catering to the global market. The adoption of this technology within the industry has not taken place. But I can tell you enough and more examples exist in the country. This is what we are spearheading, putting across. This is from an automobile perspective. Automobile perspective said connectivity, autonomous driving, and consumer experiences, lots of work is happening. Lots of it is happening. Company like Robert Bosch, company like Tech Mahindra, the entire, you'll be surprised, 66%, 66 to 70% of infotainment and telematics requirement for the world automobile segment get designed from Bangalore. Right? That is the kind of digital capability people have put, right? An infotainment system for any car man majors globally or in India, it gets designed. I'm using the word Bangalore, of course, the alternate center is Pune, the large aspect of design for the digital transformation of infotainment and the, the telematics is happening out of Bangalore. So that's the way the market from is moving towards in the automobile segment. There's an automotive industry key segment, very interesting slide, very interesting slide. The, in, the, in the past, the traditional players who used to play in that game used to be company like Honeywell, company like Toyota, etc. on the traditional side. On the new companies are playing, as you pointed out, sir, Google. 
companies like Apple, there are the companies not trying to do There's no reason. There's no reason for Apple to cre create an automobile company. But or, or Apple, Google to drive an autonomous car. There's no need. But the fact they say is we will not be an automobile manufacturer, but they get tons of data. They get tons of data, utilizing the data, how do I ma make my vehicle more efficient? How do I make it driverless? How do I make it autonomous? How do I make it more sensible and shared mobility? That's the way the market is being bought. The reason I'm saying is your future competition is not going to be from your traditional rivals. It is going to be alternate technology rivals. I was hosting a visit for a food manufacturer, Cargill Corporation in the US. So I said, alternatively, companies like Intel, Cisco, companies like Microsoft, they're all collaborating to create an alternate interest infrastructure for food company. She said, I would never imagine sitting back in the US that Intel and Cisco could ever be my competition one day. The fact is, Intel has acquired Mobileye to get that driverless car competency that is required for so that the future chip that Intel, all the automobile car gets in, is designed and developed by Intel. Right? As I said, Google, they said, the future data, how does it come, digitized data, where does it come from? If they have an access to it, future of automobile, when it goes to the case architecture, Google is a leader. Apple is a leader. That's the way the new people are coming in. You talk about AWS, Amazon, Amazon completely. The way the customer interaction takes place has transformed. I do not know about many of you in this room. In, even in India, for instance, Amazon is able to change the way we buy our products, especially the next generation. The next generation, uh, uh, as for the cash, cash on the cash on delivery model, was introduced is because the digitization model was so strong, they completely impacted it. So companies like Amazon will be a major player in automobile five years from now. Company like Intel is already putting a foothold into an automobile segment now. Mahindra and Mahindra, the way they are now looking at selling their tractors is completely different the way they were doing some time back. Mahindra and Mahindra, for instance, today when they sell their tractors to farmers, they are not, not charging any more down payments. They are giving easy installments. They just say, utilize my product, and they are saying the driver behavior, the, the driving behavior, charging the price of the product on the consumptions, and rather than based on the actual physical capital equipment. These are the models which are completely changing. Digitization is driving the places here. As I said, in digital enterprises, some of the changes are taking place. In the connected travel, some of the things take place. Autonomous driving, some of the changes take, changes taking place. So these are the five or six or seven areas on which we believe that technology is going to completely change. And I've got examples of retail. I've got examples of financial services. I've got examples of space. Uh, the decks are there for you to access ARC and do it. But the fact today is the systems of case is changing. Systems of technology is changing. System is moving from system of records to system of customer experiences. And those are the ways is what is putting across. Again, uh, uh, all these case studies talked about automobile industry, the GM, General Motors, the, the automobile segment, completely the transformation is real. And so to answer your question, uh, we are today, what we were India and IT services providers destination three decades back, became an in, the indigenous R&D centers for major, major uh, multinational corporations out of the centers in India. Now today we are becoming the digital partners for the global world from India. That's the way we are building our capacity. Uh, the expectation globally from India is very, very high. So I would urge each one of you to start looking at it, evangelize, con participate, and create the environment required so that just the way we rule the IT world for the last th th three decades, the digital world, India would like to play. From a NASCOM perspective itself, the IT world, total outsourceable market is 300 billion US, IT services world. We own 54% of the total services from India, very large. But today we are saying that is no good. The total estimated digital market in the world is approximately 1 trillion US dollars. On 1 trillion US dollars, India's 150 is less than 10%, or maybe just about 10%. So uh, we say we have a huge play, we are shifting ourselves, we request industry to shift, we will build the capacity capability required to move the entire industry towards a digital, digital revolution that is placed, that is what the goal, what we have. So again, I'll skip this, this I said today is the, uh, some features about India, is that we are the 
third large, answering your question again, sir, where does that digital innovation takes place? Uh, I do not know your experience, what we are experiencing in India, with due respects to all of you, all of you represents mighty organization. The larger organizations are finding it difficult to pace the level of innovation on accelerate, accelerating the level of innovation. The innovation is happening at a smaller, nimble startup community system, but the large enterprises and the startup like our Venus and Mars. Venus and Mars. The starters don't believe for process efficiencies, process stability, and their velocity for innovation is very high, whereas large enterprises is exactly the opposite. They're completely process-driven, process efficiency is parameter, and their velocity for innovation is low. So the problem what we have is, how do we get the startup on one end and the large enterprise on the other end start talking to each other? Just give a perspective. Uh, in 2016, we had close about 270 different startups focused on deep tech technologies. Deep tech technologies would include blockchain, IoT, AR, VR, data sciences. Uh, these are the, uh, some of the technologies. In 2017, the 270 has become 540 different startups working on different applications. For example, this one startup from India is supplying a sensor equipment which goes to a cold roller mill, CRM mills, and it measures the temperature inside that cold roller mill and can predict what should be the next step that needs to be taken, either to shut down or continue with the operations or not. The other startup from Pune called Car IQ on the OBD port of a vehicle, it can measure and you can, on a uh, subscriber model is offering the services, Car IQ, it can share with you your driver behaving, uh, uh, the behavior whether it's a two-wheeler or four-wheeler, so that as an insurance company, I can package my insurance charges to you differently than if from a buyer, than from a driver who is a bit more rash. There's another startup you may like to look at in Hyderabad base called iBot. iBot is converting a mechanical device into an electronic device through a relay panel. This is helping one of the, uh, the, the water purifier company, I forgot his name, water purifier company in Bombay, Aquaguard. Aquaguard. So Aquaguard is to charge their product at 4,000 rupees per unit, and per year they use to charge 330 rupees as a maintenance fee every year. They changed the business model from 2018 April. They don't charge you for the cattle equipment, they charge you for the amount of water they purified at your home. They have a sensor which tells you how much water you purified. End of the month, they charge you for the water purified and not for the cattle equipment. They change the model from being a capital intensive to digital intensive. The startups are completely changing. Automobile industry under threat, consumer product industries under change, and aerospace industries, no exception. You, today, as I speak to you today, for the, there's also a program, formal program with Airbus. Airbus is running its accelerator in India, uh, in Bangalore. They're having a seven startup from India showcasing their profile, how Airbus can utilize the startup technology for their uh, machine utilization. The machine utilization is when a long haul aircraft lands up in say at Bangalore, they're typically given two hours time, two hours time, check whether the engines are working fine, corrective actions taken, is ready to fit, fly again. Right? Very difficult. Uh, so what they do is one startup there, it puts an AR VR solution. When, as soon as the aircraft lands, the, the aircraft machine technician, he just wears that AR VR lenses, he just looks at the entire engine, it tells him the trouble spots. Which all blade needs to be worked on, which all blades to be replaced, is checking with the entire engine. They reduce the total efficiency time from two hours to close about 45 minutes at Bangalore. Right? This is the ways the airline industry is disrupted, automobile industry is disrupted, retail industry is disrupted, financial industry is disrupted by the seven technologies and four system framework all happening simultaneously and all being championed by India. I realize I'm going to end three minutes earlier, sir, but I'm going to take a bit more to share NASCOM, what NASCOM does. So we were started in 1988 to promote IT services. This is what we are reimagining ourselves for 2018, right? Things have gone, things have changed completely. Uh, our success in IT services as a country may not continue. We are completely focused on uh, playing on a five trillion dollar GDP economy of India, one trillion dollar digital economy of India. What are we doing to achieve this? I'm gonna skip this. Uh, we created a program called, this is all happened in the last three years, last three years, uh, we created a program called NASCOM Startup 10,000 program to create 10,000 startup 
in the digital world traditionally transform the global enterprises. We have nine startup warehouses operational at nine different points in the country, largest being at Bangalore, one me in Vizag, one in Gurgaon, one in Pune, one in Bombay, one in Hyderabad, one in uh, Kerala, at those places, we, and one in Chennai. So we have, any of you at uh, any point of time would like to interact with startup to assess what capability you want them to have, please let us know what we did. In 2016, we introduced a center of excellence for IoT, where we got academia, industry, startup, developers, all put together, together have created multiple solutions for IoT, which is relevant to you. A project which we recently completed for John Deere at Pune. John Deere is leveraging AI as a technology to identify the parts required in the shop floor. So in the shop floor, when the product is completing a stage X, the AI tells them that which is the next part required, is a part available in stock, if not available in stock, order it, get it, so that just in flow time as per spare part management is managed. So startup is provided that. Coincidentally, today evening at 4 o'clock is the inauguration of Center of Excellence for Data Sciences and Artificial Intelligence in the country by the minister. So that's also happening at Mangalore. Second one of the Zen Center of Excellence for Data Science AI is coming up in Hyderabad in September. So we as a country are also creating, and to stitch in all put together, we have a program called NIPP, NASCOM Industry Partnership Program. So those of you, if you could come through ARC Advisory Services and tell us where you want to connect with startup, we'll be happy to facilitate to help you on your digital journey. Last but not the least, the program what we're working on, currently the seats are over, we're not able to fill it, a running program we call Future of Skills. Future of Skills, uh, from an IT perspective, there are 40 lakh people are working in industry. Our estimate is about 50% of them require reskilling. So we have completely created a reskilling model on this nine technologies we talked about, 3D printing, AR, VR, blockchain, IoT, data sciences. Once we complete that in this October, we'll throw it off on others. Those of you interested to reskill your people, utilize this field, is online platform that is available completely. So with this, I thank you so much for the opportunity given, and I hope to be of value to all of you as you embark on your digital transformation journey. Thank you so much.